So in the previous video, we talked about conformations of alkanes, acyclic alkanes. We'll show you a couple models in a moment, but let's talk about cycloalkanes today. Cyclohexane is the most stable of the alkanes, of the cycloalkanes, because it has the most ideal bond angle. Those carbons are tetrahedral, so they're aiming toward 109.5, and cyclohexane is the best at achieving that bond angle of the cycloalkanes that we will discuss. Cyclopropane contains the most ring strain. I'll show you a little model in a moment, but ooh, it's not real good to try to fit something that wants to be 109.5 degree bond angle into a triangle 60 degree bond angle. Remember equilateral triangles have a 60 degree bond angle? Yeah, it's not so easy to fit the tetrahedral carbons into a 60 degree bond angle thing. Rings larger than cyclopropane are not planar. They pucker, they change their orientation a little bit to try and relieve torsional strain. Remember, we talked about torsional strain is electrons are negatively charged and they don't want to be close to each other if they can help it, so they repel. That's what causes staggered to be more stable than eclipsed in the Newmans we've drawn. So torsional strain, electrons need to be as far apart as they can possibly be. So if one bond is eclipsing another bond, that's bad news. So cyclo things shift to different conformations to try and relieve their torsional strain. Let's look at a couple models. So as we said previously, single bonds can rotate. I made a mistake previously and said all single bonds can rotate, but that's not true. Single bonds that are tied into a cyclic structure cannot rotate like this one. Let's look at cyclopropane first. Here's cyclopropane. Well, here's propane, wannabe cyclopropane. I want to show you, ooh, it's really difficult to try to squeeze this thing into a triangle. These bonds are actually, the pink and green ones, are designed to be sort of flexible bonds, but ooh, it's real hard. Like, I don't want to break my model kit, so I'm not even going to try to squeeze it into a cyclopropane. Does cyclopropane exist? Yes. But is it an ideal bond angle, an ideal type structure? No. What about cyclobutane? Does cyclobutane, can we make one of those? Yeah, we can do that. Here's a cyclobutane, and because I've chosen these bendy bonds, it looks like a planar molecule, but real cyclobutane is not planar. Real cyclobutane sort of puckers and dips these two carbons kind of down while those two kind of dip up, or you could look at it a different way and say the opposite words, but it's not a planar molecule. Cyclobutane is not. These carbons are not all in the same plane. Okay, that's butane. What about pentane? We can do that. Cyclopentane. Here it is. Cyclopentane does not, is not a planar molecule either. The four carbons that are these four, one, two, three, four, those four carbons can be in the same plane. All together, I could slice through the middle of that molecule and I would hit all four of those carbons. But this carbon is not in that plane. This carbon is out of the plane. Let's see if I can get this angle quite right. Those four are all in the same plane, but this guy not so much. This guy folds up and makes what's called the envelope conformation. Doesn't that look like a little envelope lip up here? Mm-hmm. Cyclo. Pentane. I didn't show you on the butane, but I should have. But movement is still possible in this cyclopentane. Rotation is not possible. Sure, you can pick up the whole molecule and turn it over. That's not what I'm talking about. Rotation of the single bonds in cyclopentane is not possible. You can just flex your different bonds where previously I had this guy up as the envelope it could change conversions and have this one up as the envelope lip. It doesn't really matter, but that's, that's different conformations of the same molecule. Okay, cyclopentane is good, it's stable, but it's not as good as cyclohexane. Cyclohexane is the best. It's the most stable of the cycloalkanes that we will discuss. Let's talk some specifics about cyclohexane. 
This is called a chair conformation of cyclohexane. Doesn't that look comfy to sit in? A chair conformation in this kind of model kit will have three hydrogens or three groups that are its legs of the stool and three sort of matching groups pointed straight up. I could flip it over. I'm still sitting on three legs either way. I have color coded this cyclohexane to show you blue pointed straight up or straight down. The blue are the legs when I flip this molecule over. The red are all around the equator in this whole molecule. The blue hydrogens and red hydrogens have different distinguishing names. Blue hydrogens in this model, blue hydrogens are called axial hydrogens while the red hydrogens are called equatorial hydrogens. We'll draw a chair on paper momentarily, but let me explain another couple of things to you. I have color coded two of the carbons to be special as well so that I can explain what's called a chair flip. So if I take my blue carbon and I pull it down, note I did not adjust these two black carbons. They just came along for the ride. When I pulled my blue carbon down, these two kind of flipped up. This conformation that I'm in right now is called a boat conformation. We can flip it over just so you can see why it might be called a boat. We'll look later. So I, let me flip back to where I was. My blue was up here and I just pulled it down. So I went from a chair conformation to a boat when I pulled my blue down. I can then take my red carbon and push it up. Pushing this red up changed me into an alternate chair, the chair flip. I'm going to try to let you see this from the side angle because that's how we will draw it. Maybe you can see this. Oh boy, we'll see how this goes. Blue, pull it down. That's a boat. I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. Red up. That's my other chair. So there are two main chair conformations of every cyclohexane. Okay. Now I'm going to do a flip with a purpose, not just to see what a flip is and what a flip does. My blue hydrogens, remember those are the stand on the leg hydrogens. They're the straight up, straight down hydrogens. My blue hydrogens are called axial right now. And my red hydrogens are called equatorial right now. Do a chair flip. Blue down, red up. <gasps> All of a sudden, my red hydrogens are the ones that are straight up and down. Did I flip the molecule over? No, I did a chair flip like that. And my reds became the legs of my stool. My reds became axial and my blue became equatorial. I'm trying to stay at this side angle so that it will make more sense on paper when we draw it in a moment because we're always drawing from a side angle. So red is now axial, blue is now equatorial. If I do another chair flip, whoops. Mm -hmm. Oh, the struggle's real. Um, blue comes back to axial, red goes back to equatorial. So apparently when you do a chair flip, what's axial becomes equatorial and what's equatorial becomes axial. Okay, I got that point. Show me some more stuff. I have a second chair structure a second chair model that has the same blue and red carbons, but this time we've got green and white hydrogens instead of red and blue. What's the difference in these two models? If I continue to hold it like this or sideways, I would use the word up to describe the general direction of all six of those green hydrogens. The six green hydrogens are pointed up. Conversely, the six white hydrogens are pointed down. So let's see what happens to those things as I do a chair flip. Red comes down, blue goes up. Oh, struggle, struggle. Red down, blue up, there's my chair flip. Oh boy. Oh, I would still call green up, 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 up. Yeah, and I would still call white down. Let's do it again, chair flip. Mm. It's getting a little bendy right here. That's not good. Hold, please. My model kit is becoming a little more flexible than it should be. All right. 
So greens are up, whites are down. If I flip blue up and red down, ugh, and then I tweak it to actually be a chair because my model kit's getting a little more bendy than it should be, my greens are still up. My whites are still down. Well, let's try this again. Oh, my greens are still up. My whites are still down. So apparently, when you do a chair flip, what's axial becomes equatorial and vice versa, but what's up stays up. Even when you flip ax axial equatorial, what's up stays up. I would call this hydrogen up and axial. I would call this hydrogen up and equatorial. Up and axial, up and equatorial, up and axial, up and equatorial. Hopefully you could see all those hydrogens I just pointed at. I would say the same things about the white except down and axial for these three legs, down and equatorial for those three that my fingers can't reach all three at one time. Those. Yeah? Okay, what do I do with this information? Let's see if we can take this model and convert it to a two-dimensional image on paper. Oh boy, this is going to be great. I'm sincerely hoping that this image is what I want it to be, but it's a really tiny image and it's really hard to go back and edit later. So we'll see how it goes. We will start out drawing a chair with drawing this line. That's where I always start, not because it's the right way, just because it's the way I start. So there's that line. That line is connected to a front bond and that bond is coming toward me. It's coming toward the camera. So from the blue up here to the red, that is this little zigzag. And often, I don't know if I would say often actually, I said it, but I don't know if I meant it. <laughs> that bond is represented as bold to tell you that whole bit is coming toward you. Oh man, that's real ugly. Oh well. Then I have a red carbon and a blue carbon. Let me put some red dots and blue dots on this thing. Red dot up here, that's my red carbon on the left. Blue carbon over here on my right. I hope this is working out right in the camera. Then I have going backwards from the blue and the red, going behind, I'm going to two more carbons that are behind the plane of the paper, like behind the viewer. The red and blue are considered in the plane of the viewer. The two black here are coming towards you. The two black here are going behind. My chairs are never terribly pretty, but it's especially ugly here while I'm trying to describe how to draw it. Love it. It's great. If we try to fill in all of the green hydrogens, let's do that. Green hydrogens. Green hydrogen on the red carbon is pointed straight up in the air. On the carbon behind, it's not pointed straight up. It's pointed kind of up and at an angle. So that's that hydrogen. On the next one, it's pointed directly up in the air. That's this one right here. And then the one on the carbon coming toward me on the left hand side is also straight up in the air. I have a bad bond angle right there. The one on the blue carbon is pointed up, but up and to the side, up and not directly up. Yeah. And if I come on around, this hydrogen is representative of this hydrogen. Whew. That was the green. Let's do the white hydrogens. On my red carbon, I have a white hydrogen pointed kind of down. If I go on around to this carbon next, it's pointed straight down. My arm's getting tired. I'm not sure what you're seeing over here in the camera. But it's pointed straight down behind the plane of the paper. That's why I gapped this bond a little bit to show you that it's behind. It's pointed kind of down. The one I'm holding on to is pointed straight down on the blue carbon. Then it's pointed kind of down. Then there's another one on the front carbon pointed straight down. That last one I drew is this one right here. 
Okay. Cool. That's a chair. It was struggle enough to get it in a chair. Let's flip it on paper. Oh, boy. So chairs and chair flips are in equilibrium with each other. They are not resonant structures. They are not different molecules. They're conformations of the same molecule. So my chair flip, oh, this is real crooked. My chair flip looks like this. Sometimes we bold this bond and sometimes we don't. In this next structure, I'm not going to bold it, but the line that's considered the bottom line in your chair, like this is the top line, this is the bottom line, the line that's considered the bottom line in your chair is always understood to be coming toward you. It's always understood as that. So that means this line is the one coming toward you. So I'm going to start out putting some green hydrogens on again. Nope, before that, I'm going to start out by mapping this is my red carbon. Remember, a chair flip pulls your red carbon down, like in this instance, it would pull your red carbon down, that's this one, and it's going to push your blue carbon up. Let's draw the blue carbon over here as well. We got to make sure we're oriented properly. And actually, I put a green dot on this one previously. It wasn't green in my model but I'm gonna make sure that we're on the same page with the green dot carbon is the green dot carbon because the bottom line is understood to be coming toward you. This one is going away when you do a chair flip. That's still going away from you. That's still behind the plane of the molecule, behind the plane that the blue and red carbons are in. Whew, okay. On to adding hydrogens. The red carbon. When you do a flip, what's axial, those three green circled hydrogens are axial, what's axial should become equatorial. Equatorial on this red hydrogen is here. Okay, skip the green dot carbon, then go to the next one. That hydrogen should now be equatorial. Skip the blue, blue carbon, the next hydrogen that should be equatorial. Okay, what about the other three green hydrogens? The other three green hydrogens start out equatorial. When you do a chair flip, they should become axial. Axial, axial, axial. Okay, time to put in the white hydrogens that I've had to make black on here so that you can see them. The red carbon should have a hydrogen that is now axial and straight down. The blue should have one that's equatorial, not straight down, just kind of down. If the green hydrogen is equatorial, the black hydrogen should be axial. So there are my completed chair structures showing everything in proper orientation, even though it's ugly as sin. Let's double check a thing or two based on what we've said previously. We said in our model, the things that were green, we designated as pointed up. In our paper version of the model, is that legit? Yeah, all of those six hydrogens that are green are pointed up. We said the white ones are pointed down. Is that legit in our paper model? Yep. Good news, we drew it right. Let's draw two more chair confirmation. You're welcome. Two more chair confirmations with the red and blue guy that we saw a minute ago. So if you need a quick reminder before we start drawing, here's the structure. We're gonna have the red carbon as our leftmost carbon on a high point, the blue carbon as our rightmost carbon on a low point. Let's do it. Chairs are not the greatest. I'm not the greatest at drawing them. But here's our chair and chair flip templates that we're going to draw. We'll map our red carbon and our red carbon and our blue carbon and our blue carbon. 
Remember this line that's considered the bottom line in your chair. Top line, bottom line. The bottom line in your chair coming toward you. Bottom line in your chair coming toward you. That will matter quite a lot as we do chairs other than cyclohexane, like substituted cyclohexanes. Okay, on to the task at hand. Well, let's do the blue first. The blue hydrogens are here. 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 And here. That matches my model. They're all around the equator. Blue hydrogens are equatorial. Red hydrogens are all axial. Straight up, straight up, straight up, straight down, straight down, straight down. Yeah? Red or axial. But remember, when I do a chair flip, what's axial becomes equatorial. But what's up stays up. So if I circle this red hydrogen, and I described it in two words for you, I would call it up and axial. When I do a chair flip, it has to stay on the red carbon, and it needs to stay pointed up, but it needs to be equatorial now. If I look at these other two that are up and axial, make sure you put them on the correct carbons, but they are up and equatorial now. The three that are red and down, those are down and axial. They become down equatorial. That's those. And if we quickly fill in the blues, blues should go from axial. Nope, blues should go from equatorial to axial. That's these ones. Ta-da! Wow. Drawing a couple of chair structures was super painful. <laughs> Guess what? Let's draw these chair structures in a Newman projection. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, boy. Okay, so if we're trying to draw chair structures in Newmans, let's do it using these images that I stole from your book rather than the wonky drawings that we've drawn previously because I want to show you how it can be done on a two-dimensional image rather than picking up the model that we had previously. I'm going to start out actually by making these dots colored where this is what has been my red carbon on my previous pictures. That's this one. And this other one is my blue carbon. This one, this one. Okay, so remember Newman projections are the circles. So if we start out with a circle, we need to pick what bond we're going to look down. So I'm going to look down this bond, highlighted in yellow, and we need to simultaneously look down a second bond. So I'm gonna look down this bond as well. So that's going to mean that we need two circles for our Newman projection. This black carbon is the front, and the red is the back. So I'm going to have a black carbon, front carbon, and I'm going to have red in the back. On the rightmost circle, because I'm looking down two bonds simultaneously, the rightmost circle, black is in the back, and blue is in the front. Uh-huh. So, if I look at my leftmost Newman, do I see something on the front carbon pointed straight up or straight down? Well, this thing is what's actually pointed down. It's pointed straight down. So, I'm going to start out my Newman with a line going straight down, and it's a hydrogen connected to that line. Up and to the left on that front carbon is another hydrogen. That one. Up and to the right on that front carbon is another carbon. This is a CH2 that also connects to my blue carbon through that line over there. 
So it also connects to the front blue carbon. Front blue carbon has something pointed straight down on it. That's a hydrogen. Front blue carbon has a hydrogen up and to the right also. Are you following me? I'm going to look at this one over here for the back carbons. Looking down those same two highlighted bonds, my back red carbon has a hydrogen pointed straight up. Back red hydrogen pointed straight up. Back red carbon has a hydrogen pointed straight up. It also has a hydrogen pointed down, kind of down to the left. There's a CH2 connecting the back red carbon and the back black carbon. That's down here. There's a hydrogen straight up on the back and a hydrogen down and to the right on the back. Oh boy, we did it! That's my chair in a Newman projection. Is this Newman staggered or eclipsed? Staggered. In fact, all chair conformations are in a staggered orientation. Isn't that nice? That's what makes chairs so stable. We'll take one quick look at the model to see what we just drew. We're looking down this bond and that bond simultaneously. So if our camera angle is right, oh dear Jesus, let's hope so. We've got red carbon in the back over here, blue carbon in the front over there. We should have a CH2 pointed up in the middle between the front carbons and a CH2 pointed down in the middle between the back two carbons. Check, check, that's what we got. Woo woo, go us. Before we leave this, let's do a chair flip of this Newman projection. Oh my God, are you serious? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> so remember chair flips are in equilibrium with each other. So if we did a Newman, we should still have two circles. If I try and describe how I would do a Newman, how I would do a chair flip when looking at a Newman, I'm going to take the CH2 that's in between your two Newmans and pull it down and the CH2 that's between your two Newmans and push it up. I'm doing a little tweaking motion where this CH2 comes down and that CH2 will go up. And so things follow along with those movements. So if I put my orange circled CH2 at the bottom now, it's still connected to my front carbons. And this hydrogen when you push that CH2 down, this hydrogen is going to swing out to the right. Remember a Newman has this sort of Y slash upside down Y looking conformation on the front carbon always, because that shows you the proper bond angle orientation around a tetrahedral carbon. So when you push that CH2 down, the hydrogens swing along with it. They pivot, pivot. If I do the same thing, but now with the purple, putting the CH2 in the middle of the purple, it's now up and the hydrogens pivot along with it. Okay, why is this crazy lady drawing all of these structures with plain, simple cyclohexane? Well, because the better you understand simple cyclohexane, the more quickly we can talk about more complex examples. More complex examples are the expectation of what you will do, but we're talking about cyclohexane for a real long time so that you can be good at substituted cyclohexanes when we do that next. If we click through a couple of images now, here's the boat confirmation that I showed you when I was flipping the models momentarily. It's a computer drawing, so it's much neater than a boat I would have drawn anyway, but the boat is not the most important confirmation. Why not? Because check this out, the boat confirmation is eclipsed. When you draw a cyclohexane in a boat, it is an eclipse confirmation. That's what makes boat not as good as chair. 
when we were flipping our model previously, we would start in one chair and end in another chair, and I told you that we stopped in a boat along the way. We didn't show you a half chair, because really it doesn't really matter. We will convert from a chair to the other chair constantly when we're drawing these molecules, but we won't ever really, I won't expect you to be able to draw a boat conformation. If I don't expect boat, I certainly don't expect half chair or twist boat. But here's some energetics of the flipping between the two chair conformations and what it costs. So here's a quick summary of things that I've said, things that you should know. Um, yeah, that's good enough.